Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first session of the Oblivion Oath, the very first Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play Twitch stream. I am your host and Game Master, Jason Bullman. I am the Director of Game Design here at Paizo, and I am joined by four amazing players drawn from our own staff that I'm going to introduce here in just a moment. Uh, we're we're going to get started over on this couch here. Uh, we'll, we'll let everybody introduce themselves to the, to the stream. Hi, I'm Sarah Marie, and I'm the Customer Service and Community Manager here at Paizo. Hi, I'm Owen Casey Stevens, and I'm the Starfinder Design Lead, so I have no idea how to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Katina Davis. I'm Customer Service Representative here at Paizo. Uh, and I'm Gabe Wallaconis, and I'm the Project Manager. All right, so uh, before we get started here, I want to talk a little bit about the game <laughs> that we're about to run. This is kind of the first ever uh, original story, actual play, Twitch stream of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So you're going to learn a lot about the new game here during this stream. But I do want to note, our job isn't just to spoil new game mechanics. You're going to get plenty of that by watching us play. But what we're really here to do is to have a good time and tell a good story. So uh, as I am a benevolent GM, I wanted to make sure that you guys start out with one hero point each. I'm going to hand these Ooh. out, so I'm going to put two on this side. Shiny. One for each one of you, and you get you get your hero points. Here you go. You. Those are the only ones you're getting from me. The rest can be bought by uh, the uh, fabulous folks in our Twitch stream. Uh, there is a currency that you can earn by watching and donating to the stream uh, that earns you gold. And for a thousand gold, you can buy them additional hero points to give them a better chance to survive my evil machinations. Yay! Um, <laughs> Alternatively, Help if th us. if this is the type of viewer you are, you can spend that thousand gold pieces for me and buy me a villain point, which I can oh. use much in the same way that they can use their hero points. Uh, like and uh, last but not least, uh, if you if you want to be immortalized on the stream for a thousand gold pieces, you can also name an NPC, and I'll work that into the story uh, going forward. I mean, assuming your you know NPC's name isn't. Ketchup McCheeseburger, right? You know, but we'll make that work. Uh, <laughs> so, everybody ready to get started? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So, we're going to begin here uh, in the port city of Volumus. It is last. It is in the country of Lastwall. Uh, the uh, four of you are down at the docks. Um, there's a lot of people interested in getting out of last wall these days strange rumors out of the west coming out of rossler's coffer make it sound like some sort of catastrophe happened there the government is not talking about it they're matter of fact are kind of keeping it quiet meanwhile in volumus itself fires have sprung up it's summer it's very hot people are kind of writing it off as you know mistakes accidents that happen but it's starting to become a bit too commonplace and you can feel the townsfolk starting to be on edge some of them are looking to leave. There are many caravans leaving town all the time, but for the four of you, the quickest, the safest way out is via barge. And you find yourselves down at the docks. The smell of uh, Lake Incarthen, that kind of briny uh, uh, fish smell is heavy in the air as you approach the, the barges. There are a lot of people down here trying to get on barges. It's not a panic. I don't want to I don't want to overstress it. It's not like people are pushing and shoving, but there's a lot of people here looking to get on boats and you are among them. Um, I want to start with uh, uh, Micah and Zell. The two of you are approaching a barge called the Sleepy Sea Cat. Uh, right at the top of the gangplank to get on the barge, you see uh, a, a very tall, stern-looking woman. Uh, she's odd in that one of her eyes is gray, um, whereas the other one's kind of a vibrant blue. Uh, she clearly looks like the captain of this particular boat. She has a, uh, a, a dwarven uh, manservant next to her who's like busily writing things down on a clipboard as people are brought on board. And she's like, come on, you sluggards, we got to get out of here. This barge is leaving in an hour. And uh, the two of you reach the front. And you uh, managed to secure passage just the other day. And uh, as you approach, the captain says, Welcome aboard, I'm Heliana Iron Eye. Welcome to the Sleepy Sea Cat. And she kind of throws up her hands as kind of a, uh, that's what it's named. <laughs> um, the dwarf next to her goes, and uh, what are your what are your names? 
Uh, he is a rather disheveled looking dwarf. His beard is filthy. His smock is covered in like fish guts that looks like he wasn't done cleaning up before he came to check people in. Who, who are you? My name's Micah. Micah Tano? I should be on the list. Micah, Micah. And he flips through some paperwork for for a moment, and then he goes, ah, yes, I see you purchased this. Very good. All right. And he, he checks you off, and and he kind of looks at you and kind of does a... Although you can smell him from here, the <laughs> fact that he's sniffing you is really weird. Um, he kind of... It's like, ah, ah, and, and who's your scaly friend? This is my best friend, Zell. Zell. Just Zell. Yes, my fine smelling friend. He looks at you and he. Ugh. <laughs> no accounting for taste. And he kind of flips through his clipboard until he's like Zell, <laughs> Zell. With, a, with an S? Uh, with a Z and one L. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't want to confuse you with the Zell with two L's. Mm. And he finally finds you and clips you off and he goes. All right, you've been assigned to the uh, to the shelter over there, and he kind of points at the barge, and and this is your first chance to kind of take in the sleepy sea cat. It's a it's a it's a large kind of flat bottom barge boat. Um, it has a, uh, a castle kind of in the back, so there's stairs going up. Uh, you can kind of see it on the map down there. Um, there's a, uh, a castle kind of going up to the back where the where the wheelhouse is and everything. Uh, but the rest of the barge is pretty flat and already heavily laden with like goods and supplies. Um, stretched out in every open space, almost every open space, and you can see this on the map. There's these kind of purple uh, tarp areas drawn out on the map here. Oh, okay. um, and that is where there are tiny shelters where the passengers can hold up. You know, the, in each one, there's a bunch of like straw mats and stuff, and and strung up above, kind of between the crates, is just a tarp to keep you out of the sun and the elements. And uh, he directs you to the one over here on the starboard side, closer to the front. Okay. That's the one. So if you can go and move your character there, you have to kind of fight between all of the other passengers that are already in. Mm -hmm. And uh, oddly enough, one thing that you do pass as you're making your way on board is uh, an elf. There's one elf, and that elf is kind of back here on the uh, starboard side, um, standing next to what is unmistakably like half a dozen coffins. Hmm. And the elf is standing there, blade drawn, held between her legs, looking solemnly, and you can hear her muttering something in Elvish. She looks like she's guarding the coffins. Um, I speak Elvin. Can I tell what she's saying? She is actually, so you can only pick up hints of it because she's kind of, she's speaking very quietly. Um, but it sounds like a, a prayer to Callistria, the elven elven goddess, the elven okay. patron goddess. Um, so you can make out what she's saying, uh, but it just sounds like a prayer. It doesn't sound like a spell or anything like okay. that. She's just, she's just uttering a, a prayer of like, uh, uh, like sacred redemption. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you can you can kind of hear her doing that as you make your way around the back. Sorry, where is that on the map? Is that anywhere? Uh, it's up here on the starboard side, right up oh, okay. here. Okay, cool. Uh, you can kind of make out the pile of coffins, right? The okay, long ones right there. Yeah, um, and they're 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 stacked on top of each other in kind of a framework. Um, so. Yeah, everybody's looking at me funny now. Great. <laughs> All right, now we're going. <laughs> now I'm sure we're it'll be fine. Now, what, what could coffin. possibly go wrong? <laughs> um, all right, so uh, making uh, your way up to the barge, uh, Sarah, mm -hmm. your character, My uh, character is next in line. Now there was there's a family in front of you, a dad, uh, his his son and daughter, and they just got on board, and uh, the the captain of the boat is like. Welcome to the Sleepy Sea Cat. I'm Heliana Iron Eye. And this is my first mate, Pemro Kremp. And he's like, yes, please, to be sure. Uh, welcome to the Sleepy Sea Cat. And uh, as you approach, you notice the side has uh, a painting of just above the waterline of a sea cat, uh, which is like front end lion, back end fish. But it's clearly napping on a rock, and there's like Aww. little little sleep bubbles above it. <laughs> it's faded and old, but it's adorable. And uh, and Heliana looks at you and says, "Welcome aboard. What's your name?" Uh, Karina Whisperbane. Karina Whisperbane. Let's see. 
uh, uh, Pembro is flipping through the, the, the sheets and he's like, um, hmm, I'm not seeing. And then he gets back to the front and he's like, ah, yes, here you are. Uh, I, I see that your uh, ticket was purchased just yesterday. Yes. Well, welcome aboard. Mm -hmm. And he kind of checks you off. Um, and he sees that, are you are you wearing armor? So she has her armor on, but she also has a cloak that she's got on over it to kind okay. of mute the effect of like walking around in okay. full armor. Yeah. So um, she kind of gives you the, the, the eye and, and is just like, well, we're not going to have any trouble on the boat, are we? Well, if we do, I'll help you out. She nods appreciatively. Fair enough. Welcome aboard. And she, uh, uh, Pemro says, back there, we've got a, 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 a top for stragglers. And it's at that moment that the three of you are finally together. And I'll allow you to describe yourselves to one another, but uh, uh, to keep it simple, we'll introduce the last character, and then we'll kind of go around and describe sure. each, mm -hmm. our characters to each other. All right. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, you uh, uh, make your way up to the boat. And uh, Heliana kind of um, gives you a squinted eye. Pull his cloak over his head a little yeah. more. Yeah, because it really hides <laughs> the... <laughs> it does, yeah. yeah no, no, well, they at least droop it, down. It could be a gnome with a really white hat. That's right, underneath a cloak. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. the, the, those gnomes that wear their hats under cloaks. They do all sorts Some, of weird things. Yeah, sometimes it's yeah. cold. Yeah, it's fair, <laughs> they are gnomes. Um, all right, so hey. uh, <laughs> you approach the boat, and uh, Heliana kind of gives you the eye and is like, are you on my boat? Not yet. I am on the dock. <laughs> Pemrau roll, rolls his eyes. Yes, but do you have a ticket? <laughs> they, they told me that the name would be on the list. Uh, and what's the name? Quundle. Quundle White Mean. I paid p full price for half a slot because I am small. <laughs> Heliana goes, yep, full price tickets for all here. And uh, they kind of go through, he goes through the roster and he's like, ah, yes, you were the last ticket purchased. Y yes. Fortunate yes. that. And Heliana goes, yes, I'm sure. And uh, you are crossed off. And he says, back there, that's where we're putting all the stragglers. I and he points, he points <laughs> to a tarp. Um, as you make your way on board, um, you notice that... Uh, the folks on the boat, many of them don't pay you any heed. Uh, one goblin walking around town is nothing that anyone really pays much attention to. In fact, it's almost as if some are intentionally not paying attention to you, um, but you're used to that. Um, one person who does kind of look at you funny as he's kind of standing up on the port side looking down the dock is a knight. Uh, a last wall knight is on board. And he kind of gives you an eye. He's a very old man. He looks like he's got to be in his 60s. Um, he's bald. He's not wearing a helm. He has just a kind of a big white mustache that is uh, big and just large and frilled <laughs> out. And uh, it's the only hair on his head. And he just kind of eyes you up. And you notice he's wearing kind of old, not very well kept up armor. But he just kind of gives you an eye. And then he goes back to kind of looking down the dock. I will, I will move over to where the tarp is, but I won't get under the tarp because I don't want to take a spot anyone else might want because I don't want to get into an argument. Just sort of huddle down in the worst spot I can find in that area. Oh! Um, ropes over my head, no yeah. tarp, nothing comfortable, and hunker. Down. All right. All right. So at this point in time, all of you have gathered together under this tarp. This is where uh, Pemro Kremp, the, uh, the dwarven uh, first mate, assigned you. Uh, and uh, it looks like, as the boat is filling up, that the four of you have this area to share. There's only four kind of um, cots here, um, and this looks like the area you were assigned to. So at this point in time, I want to go around the horn and have folks uh, just kind of say what they look like. Uh, we'll keep it brief, but uh, this happens, uh, you know, first when uh, when Karina arrives and Quindle and, or sorry, not Quindle, Zell and Micah are already there. So mm -hmm. uh, why don't the two of you describe what you look like? Okay. Um, I mean, Micah's a gnome, so she's just a little bit over three feet tall. She's <laughs> very, very tiny. Um, she's got pink braids and clutching onto kind of a big giant black spell book and got her, her little staff and... Um, she probably looks just very excited and 
kind of overstimulated because it's been a long time since she's seen this many people all in one place. <laughs> so, yeah, she's just kind of happy to be there and she's with her friends, so she feels comfortable. <laughs> Looking all wide-eyed. Yeah, yeah, kind of right. like, ooh, I'm, I'm observing everything and just kind of yeah. taking mental notes. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, so is the <coughs> tall Eruxy or a lizard folk to the uneducated. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm calling <laughs> lizard folk. Uh, so he's, you know, kind of a little lighter green, wears a lot more human or human clothes than you, most people are probably used to seeing him in. Uh, he yeah, oddly. Yeah. Right? It's I mean, most weird. people don't see lizard folk yeah. or Ruxy in, in clothes. Yeah. You're, you're also wearing pants. Yeah, he yeah. loves his pants, too. But <laughs> he, uh, you can't really get a really good emotional read on him. He just seems like he's kind of like scanning like a lizard would do. And yeah, he's just kind of, he seems to be hovering over uh, Micah. All right. Uh, well, Karina, you arrive and see these two probably quietly chatting amongst themselves. So Karina uh, kind of has a sterner, grumpier look on her face. <laughs> uh, kind of, uh, I'm not going to say that, never mind. I was going to say resting uh, face. Yeah. Um, resting dwarf face. Yes, there you go. <laughs> resting dwarf face. <laughs> 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 so uh, she does look maybe a little bit nervous to be on a boat. She... Um, is going to kind of stake out whatever cot is furthest away from the edge of the boat. Um, kind of just seems a little uneasy to be wearing ar armor uh, right next to water. Um, as she's, I guess, coming on board, she, do she does like a little spiral symbol in the air as she sees the coffins on board, just kind of the little Phrasmin uh, holy symbol. And uh, Looks like maybe she wants to introduce herself, but she's also just seems worried and a little, like, just a little grumpy. Okay. So as you make that symbol, as you pass the elf, the elf doesn't talk to you, but the elf does look up as you make the symbol, and she nods very solemnly. Uh, Quindle is just desperately trying to stay out of everyone's way, so he, <laughs> he doesn't take the main walkway it, as much as possible. He's crawling over the, the, the cargo so that no one will step on him has his cloak up as much as possible, has what is almost definitely a spear, even though there's a rag wrapped around the top, it's wrapped <laughs> around a spearhead shape. <laughs> so Real subtle, yeah. <laughs> but, but it looks like it'd be difficult to stab you just right now, immediately. It, it would so probably do non-lethal, at least for one hit. The threat is reduced. Yeah, all right. uh, and when he gets over there, he'll see that there are three people and four cots, and will move to the edge of the boat, under the rigging, hunker down, keep his cloak up, and just say nothing. It's very gray, very small, big blue eyes, ugly even by goblin standards. Um, That's saying something. Oh yeah, no, yeah. he's he's a sight. And every once in a while, one of his ears will start to perk up out of the cloak, <laughs> and he'll grab the edge of the cloak and pull it down. Oh. <laughs> I immediately want to hug him. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, as uh, as the 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 four of you kind of make yourselves comfortable, uh, you hear Heliana scream. That's it! Sorry, we can't take anymore! And you hear a bunch of kind of cries and shouts um, as people want on board. And you hear a bit of a commotion. Uh, and the knight uh, you saw begins making his way around the boat. And eventually he kind of crosses through your area. And you hear him going, Lyra! Lyra! And he kind of looks, have any of you seen my squire? Lyra! What do they Young woman! Like? She didn't make it. He looks very concerned. This dwarf looks young. He looks and he's, he kind of nods at you, but he's <laughs> like, mm, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm looking for my squire. Quendel's going to scan the crowd and see if there's mm -hmm. any young person who looks like they're trying to get the attention and hop up. Come yeah. Over. Um, give, me a, give me a perception check. Go ahead and uh, bounce me a d20 and add your perception bonus. I will do that thing. Yeah. Uh, I rolled a one, so Ooh. when I add one, that will give me a two. <laughs> so you noticed very distinctly that uh, he has feet, and they are interesting, <laughs> because they are armored feet, and that's weird. I will stay away from the armored feet. Yeah, they are very stompy. That's going to distract yeah. me from any effort to do good. Yeah, no, you, 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 you don't pick up anything at all. Um, but while you're staring at feet, can the rest of you give me a perception check? Mm -hmm. I got a 7, uh, plus 4 is going to be 11. 11. 15. 17. Ooh. So, Zell, you haven't been in 
uh, you know, kind of the more civilized parts of Last Wall for, for too terribly long. Mm -hmm. But you have been there long enough to recognize some of the kind of iconography of stuff. You're, I mean, you're kind of fascinated by it. Yeah, I love I it. read you correctly. Um, <laughs> and looking at uh, him, you notice something odd. And you're not sure, no one else seems to notice it, but you do. He's got, he's got a badge on, um, you know, <coughs> like above his, like, pauldron. Um, just kind of draped on the shoulder piece, where where a lot of knights have badges mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And his badge is the symbol of Last Wall, right? So it's it's the it's the the, the fortress looking symbol of Last Wall. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of it, though, there's a black key, like mm -hmm. the the outline of a black key is over the symbol, which is really weird. You've never seen that before. Like other people have like different like colored chevrons and stuff around it and, and different affectations but you've never seen one where there's something covering up part of the symbol it's it's just strange and mm -hmm. you, you, you just kind of fixate on it but he doesn't seem to I mean he doesn't like right, stop right. and talk or anything he, he just kind of pushes through your thing and, and makes his way um, he, he calls out for Lyra for a while and you can hear him kind of making his way around the boat um, so um as this is happening, the boat begins to move. The sleepy sea cat begins its low, slow journey around <laughs> Lake Incarthen. So if, if there's anything anyone particularly wants to do now that they're on board and things are underway, we can we can do that. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just kind of move things forward. Is there anything anybody wants to do? Is there a pile of rope anywhere nearby? Uh, there's the pile of rope that has the anchor attached to it up in the, the I was top looking corner. for less heavy and noticeable rope. <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, here and there, like, piled up on top of crates, you can see coils of rope and things like that, yeah. Having identified where the rope is, Quendel's happy. He just wants to know where there's rope. Okay, yeah. You're not, uh, you're actually kind of underneath some of the webbing that goes up yeah. to the masts and stuff, too. So there's plenty of rope all over the place, uh, should you need to acquire some. Rope is useful. Yeah, no, it's very. <laughs> uh, you can tie things up with rope. You can burn rope. If you're hungry enough, you can eat rope. That's that's a goblin thing. I mean, you do you. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> I, I oh sorry. I think Karina is going to take her backpack off, sit on her cot, and definitely look like she doesn't want to leave her backpack because she does not trust anyone else uh, to not take something out of it. Yeah, you don't know these strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I mean. Eventually, you know, Pemro comes by with stew. Uh, um, that is, like, in the early afternoon, once the boat gets going, mm -hmm. he comes by with, like, a fish stew, um, which he, like, hands out bowls and just slops some into it, um, giving you all a chance to talk over a meal, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. I was going to say, Micah would probably want to introduce herself to Karina and say, hi, you know, it seems like we're kind of in the same area, and also probably try and get Quandle to come and talk to us, <laughs> so. Well, what do you say to him? Um, are, are you in this section too? You can come and sit with us if you want. Uh, I, I'm all right, Quandle is fine out here. Okay, well if you want to, you, you can, we're friendly. Uh, all right. Pemro okay. is handing out stew and he tries to hand you a bowl. I'll, I'll, I'll take a bowl of stew. Okay, yeah, he, he gives you a slop, he's like, he looks at you, want the head? Oh yes. Yeah, he gives <laughs> you the fish <laughs> oh, there you go. So he hands it, he plops that out to you and it's like sticking up out of the bowl, staring at the rest of you. Quendel will pull out what appears to be like a water boat of it with a much larger opening at the top, and he'll open it, and he'll shove a hand in, and he'll pull out a pickle. <laughs> he'll tie yep. it shut, <laughs> and he will start to gnaw the pickle into a spoon shape, and he will then use the pickle to eat the stew. He got the best part. <laughs> oh, you, do you want the fish head? Oh, it's okay. You are um, sure? I will not fight you with the fish head. I can get them later. Pemro kind of says, do you eat stew? Yes. Okay. He, he kind of hands you a bowl. Thank you. Yeah. He uh, he says, I think I might have another fish head down in there somewhere if you want it. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so he sticks his hand in the stew oh, and <laughs> fishes around for a bit. And fishes mind you, around. he's yeah. dirty. Mm. Uh, yeah, he fishes around. This yeah, is no, why I see what I just did there. I got my bowl of stew first, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. And he, he, he gets out his fish head, slaps it in your bowl, throws some broth over uh. it, and hands it to you, and he's kind of on his way. Thank you. So the uh, hours kind of start rolling by. Uh, the four of you, you know, get a chance to at least introduce each other by name, although you're all just travelers on a boat at this point. Mm -hmm. Um and in the early afternoon, um, shortly after Pemro comes by to collect the bulls, a young boy um, comes bolting 
through your area, holding a, a like a small book in his hands, kind of going, "I got it, I got it." And uh, you can see uh, a slightly older uh, girl chasing after him, screaming to give that back. Um, she's ah, give me my book back. Anybody want to do anything to this situation? I think Karina will definitely say, hey, it is not safe to run on boats like this. You <laughs> need to slow down. <laughs> uh, do you have uh, diplomacy or intimidation? Uh, Either I will work depending on which way you want to go. I do have intimidation. All I think, right. Uh, she is going to give him a, a stern look and... <laughs> <laughs> try to intimidate him to stop running. So that is, I rolled a six plus four, so a ten. A ten. All right, you you kind of give them the stern talking to, but as when adults often <laughs> talk to children, they do the kind of slow step, and then the moment they're kind of past, they start bolting again. Um, and she's screaming, give me back my book. And he's like, I got it, I got it. And uh, they, they kind of go running around the boat. Um, a moment later, uh, an older man, clearly their father, just looking at the two of them, looking at him, looking how tired he looks, <laughs> um, clearly their dad, comes up and he's like, oh, did, did any of you see my children uh, go running through here? I, I think, I think uh, uh, Erdrun may have stolen Yara's book. Did you see her? Yes, they yeah. definitely came through here. Uh, he kind of, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, ni nice to meet all of you. Nice to meet you. He, he kind Thank of, as he's you. making, sorry for the children. They're mm -hmm. cooped up on a boat. <laughs> and he kind of makes his way uh, past. Um, uh, it, this kind of goes on for a little bit. They're running all over the boat. Um, the uh, at one point in time, uh, uh, just after one more circuit, Erdron, the boy comes into your area and tries to hide behind one of your cots. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's like, shh, don't tell her I'm here. <laughs> and you see him opening up the book and it looks like her journal. Oh. Mm. Yeah. I I feel like Karina might need to, to say something. Step in and, and just... You know, it's not nice to take things, and uh, she did not give you permission to look in that book. You need to get it like, back. But she writes mean things about me in here. See, right here, and he points at a thing. My brother Erdren is a smelly oaf. Well, sometimes people just need to write their thoughts out so that they don't say them in person. Hmm. Uh, give me a diplomacy check. If oh you don't boy. have diplomacy, you can no. just roll charisma. Uh... I'm not trained in it, but I do have a bonus to it, right? So I can uh, still... You can just roll it and add your okay. charisma. When you're untrained, uh, all you get to do is add your uh, appropriate ability score. Okay, so that's going to be a 13. 13, he goes, kind of frumps, and he's like, all right. And just at that moment, Yara comes in, and uh, he's like, he holds it up, looking all ashamed. <laughs> and she snatches it back and looks at you and just smiles and, and looks at all of you and goes, thank you. She kind of holds it tight and <laughs> makes her way uh, back to the area where they are sleeping. They're sleeping kind of across from you. And uh, her, her father comes back again and, is, and grabs uh, Eardrin by his ear and is like, you will not be running on this boat. <laughs> and he goes, he's like, yes, Papa. And uh, they go back to their area. Um, leaving and no one pays any attention to you at all so so <laughs> ideal right yeah yeah but um, i feel bad for them because they're small and bored i understand <laughs> that yeah also sure. they're small and bored they might set fire to something so it's a distinct possibility yeah uh, that's my experience with small bored creatures they yeah. set fire to things all right that's fair so keeping things moving several days pass the barge is making its way north, yes. I feel like I should, Karina should have figured this out before she got on the boat, but how long do we expect this journey to be? Oh, yeah. So your tickets were from here to its end destination, which were green gold. Um, so that's quite a ways away. That's like halfway around the lake. Uh, the boat is scheduled to only make one stop during this, one major stop during this, although it mm -hmm. may stop here and there on smaller towns for supplies. Its major stop is at Caliphus. Um, the... Uh, uh, the uh, city uh, in Ustalov right on the shore. Um, that is its only scheduled stop. Um, it does have a few other minor stops the captain has mentioned that it, she will be making. Uh, but all of you are making your way to Green Gold. Green Gold is the kind of visitor's welcoming city in Kyanin. It is in fact the only city in the Elven Nation where outsiders are freely allowed to come and go without mm. leave 
from the uh, Elvish Lords. Um, so your group is n- not that you all know that you have the same ticket, but that is that is where you are heading. Mm-hmm. Um, Califace uh, is not very far away, and in fact, after a few days, the boat actually arrives there. Um, during this time, by the way, um, you've gotten to know some of the folks on the board uh, on the boat on the board. Um, <laughs> so you've gotten a chance to know the the Hasting Hasting family. Uh, that's the father. Uh, whose name is Oldru and the two kids, Yara and Eirdrin. Um, they are a regular uh, group on the boat. There's a number of people who are just quiet and aren't interested in getting to know strangers, but those three seem to have made a connection with your group. Um, you've noticed this knight going about uh, his business. Um, he spent most of that first day looking for his squire, but after that he's been just kind of quietly sitting and contemplating and meditating over on uh, by himself. Um, there's a handful of other people on board. Uh, of them, the only people that you've really gotten a chance to know is Heliana and Pemro. Uh, Heliana being the captain, Pemro being her first mate. Uh, there are two other mates on board as well, uh, but they mostly are quiet and keep to themselves. Um, so, all, of, all, all, all told, you would guess there's around 20, 30 people on the boat total. Uh, somewhere in that neighborhood, it's kind of hard to get an accurate count because people are constantly moving around doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's what you see. Um, Can I approach the night? Yeah, absolutely. I want to try to, you know. So this is probably a few days in. Yeah, a few um, days in. He's kind of doing his thing. He's he's in uh, uh, he's in one of the uh, uh, tarps up closer to the, the oh, castle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to be like, oh, did you find your uh, your squire? He looks at you with kind of suspicion, um, and he just says, no, I'm afraid she didn't make it on board. And Hmm. he kind of looks, like, really disturbed by that. Like, Hmm. it it looks like it really bothers him that she didn't make it. I noticed you have a... your iconography is a little different than what I've seen. He looks down at it and looks up at you and then kind of pulls his cloak over it. <laughs> and he says, I don't believe that's any of your concern. Oh, it's, I'm fascinated by all aspects of your people's culture. And I had never seen such a symbol before associated with, uh, you know, Knights of the Last Ball. So, but uh, of course, I, I must have overstepped my bounds. Excuse me. There are many orders in Last Wall. Hmm. He shrugs. Oh. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Well, uh, it is not really something I am free to speak of. I'm sorry your uh, squire didn't make it on board, though. If there's anything we can he do, He is looking at you really suspiciously. Oh, right no. Now. He's used to it. He just, like, tilts his head kind of like lizards do every <laughs> once in a while. Well, let us know if we can be of any help. You notice his hand kind of unconsciously reach towards his breastplate. Like just kind of in the middle, even though there's nothing there. Yeah. I'm like, and he just he just kind of stares at you. Ah, anyway. Yes, quite. Yes, we're we're right over there. If you need anything, let us know. Me and my friend Micah are have some very useful skill sets. So now he's ri- <laughs> like he can't <laughs> squint more than he's already <laughs> squinting. He is maximum squint at this point in time. Suspicion intensifies. Does he have any like valuables on him? I mean, he's a knight, so you can clearly make out his valuable-looking, incredibly dangerous longsword, and uh, his, you know, but but there's something odd about it. Like (laughs) his his, you know, looking at him for valuables. Mm -hmm. Like he's wearing expensive armor. You know, Mm -hmm. he has expensive weapons, but they don't look as well maintained as Mm. like. Uh, you know, Karina's armor looks right. like she maintains it regularly. Like most <laughs> other knights, look like they they have shining, resplendent armor. His looks a little dingy. Like hmm. he keeps it up, but it's not like yeah. his primary thing. Um, Almost like he should have a squire to do that for him. Uh, one would think. <laughs> I will say good day to him. Um, as you make your way away, mm-hmm. Pemro kind of saw you chatting with him mm-hmm. and he kind of walks alongside you for a bit and he's like yeah he's a thorny one that's mm. uh, that's Sir Terald that's all we've gotten out of him is Sir Terald <laughs> he's the unfriendliest knight we've ever had on board yes he does seem rather unfriendly Sir Terald 
Well, thank you, Pimro. Is <laughs> I'd keep an eye on. I'd keep. I'd keep out of his way. He's a thorny customer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank he you. kind of shrugs. This is as he's like mopping the deck. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like hey, you thanks do. Thanks for the fish head. Yeah. <laughs> he looks at you and goes, plenty more where that came from. I'm <laughs> sure of that. You got the hookup. <laughs> so, how are the children adjusting to life on board the ship? Uh, they're bored. Terribly, terribly bored. So, at some point, Quindle would like to approach them where it looks like no one else will notice. Yeah. Go over to them. Yeah. And th- they kind of do this, ah! Bo- oh, and they kind of look under things. Bored? Yeah. Are you bored? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes? Are you a... Are you a goblin? No. I knew it. They look at... Are you sure? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> no matter how bored you are, you shouldn't set anything on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you kind of wide-eyed, and he's like, I'm, I'm gonna Fires on boats seem bad. Fires on boats are very bad. <laughs> okay. But I have something that might let you not be bored. Okay. All right? Okay. It's called, ready? Chalk. I'll pull out a piece of chalk. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the piece from you, and he goes, I can draw out a game. You can draw out a game, and... Play it with your sister. He kind of looks at her. Games with other people are more fun than games by yourself. This is a game I can win. (laughs) He starts inventing a game (laughs) called Eardrin Ball. (laughs) My work here is done. All right, (laughs) Bundle bundle will move away. And all right, after after a few days, they've they've used the chalk to cover their entire space in various like. D- like hopscotch like diagrams and stuff like that and they're they're playing games. Good. Um, so the boat eventually puts in at Caliphase and it's only there for like a day. Um, and, and, and not even the whole well actually it is there for almost the whole day um, uh, and through the night so that it can leave on the tide. And uh, uh, during that time some passengers get off, some get on um, the family is still on the night is still on, obviously the crew is still on. Some of the other folks that you've seen, a lot of the folks are still on, looking like they're heading to Green Gold. What, one assumes um, the elf and the coffins are on their way. Yeah, okay. they, they are still obviously on board. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a boat full of folks. Um, a lot of people, like if you're going to bother to take a barge journey, you probably wouldn't take it to Califace anyway. right? You can get there over land uh, just as easily and probably cheaper. Um, so going by boat, most of them are there for the longer journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once you get to Green Gold, that's the easiest way to book passage further afield to go to like Absalom or countries beyond. Um, so a lot of the folks stay on board. You pick up a couple new pe- passengers, you lose a couple passengers. Um, some of the cargo gets off, some different cargo gets on, but mostly the boat stays the same and continues on its journey. Um, Over the next day or two, the boat begins its southward turn. Uh, um, Let's see. uh, uh, Karina, you're making your way around the boat when you hear Heliana talking to one of the passengers. And she, uh, the passenger is like, why aren't we putting in a throne step? I could, I could, I'm running out of, you know, the food that I like. He's complaining that he's out of, out of his favorite sure. sausage. And he wants to stop uh, at throne step. And Heliana's like, I'm not putting in in that damn town. Those priests are too much of a bother. Um, because you're now sailing south past Rasmaran, home of the living God. And there are rumors that fly around that the place is filled with fanatics. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, it depends where you are. There are fanatics everywhere, and it depends on opinion and view. Uh, but Heliana is not interested in dealing with that, and she is sailing south past Rasmaran um, and making her way straight south towards Green Gold. Although you never really leave sight of shore, to be honest. This barge is not for deep water running. Uh, the waves far enough uh, from shore are calm enough that she can travel relatively safely. She don't want to get any closer to shore, but she doesn't want to lose sight of it either. So another day or two passes. Life aboard boat becomes kind of a common thing. Uh, for a while, the boat was being followed by a couple gulls that were swooping around. That was interesting for a little bit until <laughs> Pemro shot one with a crossbow and <laughs> made it into stew. Excellent. The other, the other gull decided that it was done following the <laughs> boat and left. 
Um, other than that, pretty monotonous life on a boat. Uh, it slowly sails south. Um, the crew goes about their business making sure the boat stays afloat and everybody else uh, kind of just whittles away the time. It's slow going. I'm going to ask my companions around here one day when we're eating. I'm like, do you think that elf is going to eat all of the meat in those caskets? What? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> oh. I don't think they really do that. They what, so usually they're just guarding bodies? Yeah, they, they bury a, them. Do a Ruxy eat their dead? Some of us do. Huh. Did not know that. Why only some? Well, we're not uniform. Uh, uh, that's a good point. I'm Goodness. Sorry. And to be I'm fair, <laughs> not all Ruxy are tasty either. So, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes <laughs> you bite that. into one and you're like, ooh. Uh, so I, think I like not the gestures. Yeah. Why is Karina's yeah. very fascinated by this, this whole, like, because yeah. she's, she's got some interest in, in what people do with, or different uh, ancestries do with their bodies when they die. Um, so she'll she'll definitely get into a conversation with uh, with Zell over yeah, he's burial and death practices. He's very of confused about all that meat there. He's like that other person <laughs> was looking for sausages. I thought you were said. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> um, Quendel will have been s been hunkering a little closer and a little closer <laughs> every day as you all don't throw things at him. So he's, <laughs> he's definitely listening in to the conversation about who does and doesn't eat their dead. <coughs> That's useful information. Fair. So after after uh, two more days travel, so you're now you're still making your way past Rasmaran. Um, uh, it's it's evening, it's late one night, uh, or about to be night, and you you hadn't noticed before, but apparently there is a a, a bard or some sort of performer on board. Ooh. She hasn't nice. played anything up to this point. She's been quiet. You're not sure if she got on at. Um, Caliphase or whether or not she was on board from the beginning. Like I said, there's lots of people. She does look familiar. You think she might have gotten on with you. Um, but she is, she breaks out a flute one night just at sunset and begins to play kind of a low, almost dirge. It's hard to get a dirge on a, on a flute, but you can do it. It's lots of <laughs> low, slow notes. Um, and she's playing that just as the sun is setting. And uh, the water's a little rough right now, so you're hearing that, but between the lap of the waves up against the side of the boat, there's kind of this low, mournful flute being played uh, up near the, the aft castle, um, where she's kind of perched up near the stairs. Um, and it's, it's really odd. It's really kind of the whole, uh, like a melancholy sits over the boat as she plays this kind of low dirge. Anything recognizable? No. Okay. No, it, it sounds like... It's not a song you've ever heard before. Um, so, um, night aboard the boat is pretty much most like days. Um, uh, you know, everybody kind of packs down uh, for the night, and uh, you know, most people go to sleep. Uh, the crew takes shifts, making sure the boat keeps moving uh, at night. But it, it doesn't go at full speed at night. They drop some of the sails and just kind of gently coast south. I think Karina probably tends to stay uh, snooze during the day more and stay awake at night, especially because she's she's nervous about her stuff getting stolen on this barge, um, and also she can see in the dark, so she kind of right. feels like you know if somebody's going to steal stuff, they're probably going to do it at night, and she's going to catch them. Yeah, fair enough. Well, even with that, right, it's still easy to fall mm -hmm. into kind of a, sure. a, a not a doze, but just kind of like quiet contemplation, mm -hmm. probably prayer and meditation. Um, the first thing you hear is a cry. What kind of a cry? The second thing you notice is a smell of smoke. Uh oh. And the cries begin to grow and echo. And oh then they no. turn into screams. And you are all woken up. Does you this were not fully asleep yeah. and were like, what? Does this sound like cries from the boat? Or yes. Cries from, okay. It's clearly coming from the boat. It's coming from the aft of the boat. You hear some kind of noise. There uh, sounds like some sort of panic or some sort of chaos going on in the mm -hmm. back of the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, Karina, you're already up. You're already yep. geared and armored mm -hmm. and stuff. The rest of you don't really wear armor, so you're just sleeping in clothes and stuff with all your stuff nearby. But Karina, fortunately, you are actually armored and have your weapons oh, yeah, at she, hand. As soon as she's like cognizant that there's stuff going on, she's like 
got her axe ready. But the rest of you can are, are kind of woken up by the noise almost right away. Mm-hmm. It quickly becomes apparent that there is something happening on the back of the boat. You hear the sound of steel ringing out. Oh. You hear cries, and you are selling, smelling smoke. And as you look back, you start to see flickering flames on the back of the boat. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, you guys jump up. You are in your little uh, area here. And the first thing you notice, uh, and I'm not going to put all the NPCs on the map because there's just too many of them. Mm-hmm. So basically, uh, any place that is inside a tarp is filled with NPCs. So those areas are all difficult terrain because that's where there are okay. people. Uh, but the first thing you notice is the tarp directly uh, to the south of you, south being towards me, um, that one right there, has cleared out. The people have ran from that one. Oh. And they ran out and ran through your area and between crates and stuff. And that is because shambling between the crates are elven corpses. Mm. Oh, Can you no. put <laughs> these two there? Karina's in not feeling that. it. Yeah. No. Can you put this one on the other side in the bigger uh, tent area here? And this one uh, towards the back. She should have eaten them. <laughs> All right. These corpses have gotten up and are shambling around the boat. And at this point in time, can I get everyone to roll me perception for initiative? And I'm going to arrange you guys on order uh, where you get here up on top so that you can see what your initiative order is. I got a one, so I have a five. Uh, a five. So I'm just yeah. going to keep you down here. because I that's got a six, so yeah, I'm right. Okay. okay. Well, for Initiative friends. All right. 22. Dang. I'm going to go ahead and move Zell over here. <laughs> I got a 20. 20. Nice. All right. And I'm going to roll for uh, my elven corpse friends. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to place them until they go. So you don't know where they where they get to go. Corpses but are friends, not food. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with you, Zell. Um, okay. You see these corpses shambling between people, swiping at anyone who draws nearby. Mm-hmm. Um they look like the bodies of elves that have suffered some pretty terrible like chest and head wounds. Um, but that doesn't appear to be stopping them. Their rotting flesh is still powering them. The smell of them is almost wafting off. You can smell it from the back of the boat. Uh, that being mixed with the smell of smoke. Mm-hmm. And behind them, somewhere back towards the aft castle, it looks like they either knocked over a lantern or somebody threw a lantern at them because there is a fire and it is spreading. Oh, Zell. It is your turn to act. You have three actions. What would you like to do? Uh, I'll t- take care of these zombies, maybe. Um, so my like weapons are next to me, right? Yeah, so okay. you can uh, grab a weapon as an action. Everybody's standing. Right. Um, I yeah. assume everybody got up and it was looking around as mm-hmm. these things moved into place. <clears throat> so you, you can grab a weapon as an action. That's easy enough to do. Mm-hmm. And then if you'd like to move... Yes, I will grab... My rapier and short sword. Okay. And then That's going to take you two of your actions, yep. though. And then I'll move in here. All right. To stall up these two. All right. You move up to uh, stall them out. Quundle. The dead have risen. Yeah, that's never good. No. I mean, I've seen it before. But it's never good. No, it's never It's never a good thing. So the fire's back here? Yes. Um, I have lore of warfare. Yeah. Will that give me guidance on how to prevent a spreading fire as an anti-siege tactic? Um, you know what? I'll, I'll, if you'd like to spend an action thinking about it before you jump in, yeah. go ahead and make a roll. Uh, I get a thirteen. So you're not one hundred percent sure, but you do. You're not sure how to stop it, but you know one thing is certain: this bold boat is old and covered in pitch. Oh. A fire on board is catastrophically bad. Especially with all the giant piles of cargo, with all the ropes and netting everywhere, mm-hmm. um, it's this could get out of control very fast. Okay, but that's all you know. You don't actually know how to solve it because you don't see like giant buckets or anything. What does it right. take to get over uh, the the cargo here? To climb up over the cargo piles is going to require you to make athletics checks. Yeah, no. All right, so <laughs> I'll take an action. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six, one, what does it take to get through an enemy square? That's going to be an acrobatics check. It's a very difficult check, but you can try. Oh, get an 18. An 18. Uh, Running up to the zombie. Uh, That is unfortunately not enough. You were a bit short. Uh, You try to push your way through, but it's not quite enough. The zombie rebuffs you. 
All right, those are my, all my actions. All you right. will, however, shout, <laughs> we must stop the fire. We must stop the fire. Grab anything that will soak water. Rags, tarps, sails. Get them wet. Throw them on the fire. All right, you begin calling out to people who ultimately right now are in a panic. Sure. And running in every which direction. The zombies go. All right. Oh, good. Looks like I've got one on Zell. Zombies are slow. They don't get their full complement of three actions. They only get two. However, the one in front of you, Zell, is going to swing a meaty fist at you. Oh, no. Does an armor class of 18 hit you? Yeah, without my leather on, for sure. <laughs> All right. Take five points of damage as the zombie arm slams into you, and with its second action, it grabs hold of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Likewise, uh, a Quundle, the zombie in front of you, swings wildly, uh, getting an armor class of 19. That hits. All right. Uh, that is going to hit you for eight points of damage. Uh. That, that arm slams right into your head. You see stars Ouch. swimming in front of your eyes, um, and it's going to spend its second action to grab you. On the other side, move that zombie through the gap between the crates. Over here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to spend both actions coming up around and between the crates. All the people are running from it, okay. uh, but the characters aren't, so it's going to go between the crates towards the player characters. No. It'll get right up to you. I don't right like there. it. Oh. So it makes it there, but that required it to spend both of its actions to do so, and it, that's all it has. The zombie in the back uh, begins to move up and ends its turn underneath the large central tarp toward the end. Yep, there. Actually, put it right uh, at the gap in the middle. No, back towards me. Oh, sorry. There you go. Perfect. Yay. Okay. Um, so it's just shambling around, swinging at people. There are people now crowding the front end of the boat. You can actually feel the boat oh, no. tip oh, a dear. little. Not so much that you're worried about it flipping over or anything like that, but that's what happens. All right. So that's the zombies. Micah, you Ooh. can smell the rotting flesh over the, the smell of smoke now as this thing runs <laughs> up to you. <laughs> runs. Shambles. Yeah. Um, and it is your turn to act. Uh, well, it is right there, so I'm going to use two of my actions to do Chill Touch. All right. So Chill Touch uh, requires me to make a fortitude saving throw. Mm -hmm. You reach out and touch it with uh, powerful necromancy. That mm -hmm. might disrupt its energies. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me go ahead and make a fortitude save. Okay. Uh, I am going to only get a nine, which I believe is a failure. Uh, but it's not going to be a critical failure because I don't think I failed by 10 or more. Your DC is uh, 17? The spell DC? Yeah. Put me on your spell Yeah, 17. 17. All right, so a 9 is going to just barely avoid critical failing. Okay. So uh, what happens to me when I uh, hey. fail that check? If you fail that check as an undead, I'm sorry. I believe sorry. I'm enfeebled. Uh, yeah, where did it go? Chill touch. Let's Obviously, see. we are about to all learn what you're we can and can't You're flat-footed for one round on a, fla on a failed fortitude save. Oh, ah, flat-footed. All right. So its AC drops through the floor, uh, which for a zombie is already pretty low. <laughs> and you have one action left. Do you want to that disengage, or what do you want to do? Um, you could also throw up your shield spell. That's all. Yeah, I think I will do that as well. All right. You throw your shield spell up in preparation for it taking a swing at you. Mm -hmm. And last in the order, Karina, mm -hmm. is well, your turn. Yeah, so thankfully that zombie uh, meant I don't have to take my action to go move toward it. So yeah. <laughs> thank you, zombie. Um, I think, let's see. So first action, Karina is going to strike at it with her uh, war axe. All right, bring the war axe. <laughs> uh, oh, I got a three. Okay, so that's going to be a ten to hit. That actually hits because oh, I'm flat-footed. Awesome. Uh, had You're I not welcome. been made <laughs> flat-footed by the chill touch, that would have missed. Go ahead and deal damage. Sweet. Thank I was you, so Micah. glad that I went yeah. right in front of you for uh, that. And that is going to be a five plus my four strength is a nine. What type of damage is it? It is uh, slashing damage. So nine slashing. Mm -hmm. You're... A axe slices through the zombie, and zombies are vulnerable to slashing awesome. damage because you pierce their rotted outsides and they begin to spill out their insides. Mm -hmm. So that does 14 damage to the zombie. Sweet. But somehow, despite that horrible wound, nearly cutting mm -hmm. all the way through its torso, it's still standing. But what it looks pretty gross, right? It's horrifically okay. disgusting. <laughs> uh, oh, hmm. Okay. That was Do your I, first action. Yeah, that was my first action. Um... 
can, I can hit at it again, you right? You can swing again, and yes. And it's a minus... It's going to be a minus five. five. Minus yep. five. Okay, so I think I'll give that a try. Hit it with my axe again. I hit it oh. with my axe. <laughs> I got a one. Oh, no. Well, one is certainly going to miss, uh, but you could yeah. try again. Its AC is well, terrible. So I have Or you can action. raise your shield. I kind of want to raise my shield, but... Um, yeah. Defense or offense? That's mm -hmm, the big question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think I'll I think I'll raise my shield up. All right, you take the safe route. You raise your shield just in case this thing swings at you. We're coming around to Zell. It is your turn now again. So the zombies got a hold of me. It has grabbed you. That gives you a small penalty, but nothing too serious. Mm. Um, while you are grabbed, um, you are immobilized and flat-footed. And if you attempt manipulate actions, you have to make a DC-5 flag check, otherwise the action might fail. But you can attack without penalty. I will attack. All right, your rapier slashes Open. out. Uh, 22. 22 not only is a hit, it's a critical hit. Oh. That exceeds my armor class by 10. So remember, roll your damage once, uh -huh. and then double it. All right. So do that. So that's a, what, do I add my, yes. the dex, so yep. six, so 12? 12, and then it's a rapier, yep. which is deadly. So roll that die once, and add it to the total. Uh, five more, so 17. Nice. 17, and is that a slashing or piercing? Piercing. Piercing, okay. So, uh, 17 damage. You didn't activate its weakness, so you didn't get extra damage. But your 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 rapier, like, stabbed right through it, and, like, horrible mm. black ichor is pouring out of this yeah. thing. You leave it with a massive wound. But it's still somehow standing. All right. Rude. Let's follow it up with a short sword hit. Go ahead. And I'm going to use its... Uh, it's uh, versatile, so I'm going to use it as slashing instead of piercing. <coughs> Fantastic. And remember, it's agile, so you only take a minus four on top of yes. your Yes, so I only have a plus three. So 13? 13 is enough to hit. Whew. Zombies are very slow. They are not well-armored foes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Still five. Five. And it's slashing. It's so. slashing. More than enough. You Your rapier goes in one side, and before you can even pull the rapier out, you bring the short sword around and slash it across the throat. The zombie p collapses into a pile of rotten meat. Can somebody give me that mini, please? It is dead. Yay. Again. <laughs> Fortunately. It's real, real dead. For now. All right. <laughs> we'll eat Zell. tonight. Oh, <laughs> no. No, Zell, no. No, no. <laughs> I'm not even there, and no. All right. Uh... Zell, you still have one more action left. Okay. Um, can I move around to this guy? Will that will he hit me if I move? You have no him? idea if he can take an attack of opportunity reaction or not, oh, but you right. can try. Let's do it. I want to give my right. friend flanking. You go running <laughs> around this zombie, and it does nothing to stop you. It's it's a common thread. <coughs> you can't really do anything Whew. cool like that. All right, that's it for Zell. Quundle. So uh, would I need to make the DC-5 flat check to draw a weapon, because that's manipulate? Correct. Okay. Um, but I am free to do somatic com actions? Absolutely. All right. Well, Quundle's going to freak out, and he is going to <laughs> cast a spell, which he had no intention of doing. So uh, I will take two actions. I'll make them both somatic, because I'm a sorcerer, and I will hit it with a, well, shoot at it with a divine lance. All right. You fire divine lance at the thing. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, 14 will certainly hit. A, a ray of blinding light leaves your open palm, striking the zombie, <laughs> and I'm assuming it's dealing good, good damage. damage. Yeah. No. Um, so uh, yeah, the zombie, not a surprise, uh, takes good damage, so go ahead and roll damage. Seven. Seven. All right. Uh, the uh, zombie's flesh boils and, and burns as your, your holy lance hits it. Um, uh, but it is still standing. Okay. For my last action, I'm going to go ahead and fumble for my dagger and see if I can pull it or not. All right. Just go ahead and roll me a die. Ten. Ten. No problem. You have your dagger. All right. The zombie goes. Um, not having any real brain to speak of in its head, uh, <laughs> it's going to swing at uh, a Quindle. It already has you, actually. Yep. So it's going to pull you in and attempt to bite you. Mm. Uh, but I rolled a one. It kind of reaches to bite you, but your 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 my ears, melon of a head is yeah, so big. <laughs> it bites through your cloak at one point, thinking that maybe there is head there, but there isn't, and it just rips away a piece of cloth. Um, it's then going to attempt to do that again, and gets even 
uh, nowhere near with the penalty. So um, it's trying to bite you desperately, but fails. Meanwhile, on the other side... I wasn't the one that tried to eat you. I wasn't the one that tried to eat you. <laughs> You're not it a pickle. It doesn't seem to notice. Um, <laughs> on the other side, uh, Karina, the zombie, swings its meaty mm -hmm. club-like arm at you, getting an armor class of 19. That Ooh. is my armor class. Now, is that your armor class with your shield raised? It is. Okay. So, it is going to hit you. Would you like to shield block? Sure. All I'm right. try. So, here comes the damage. Uh, it does eight points of damage. Uh, which I believe gets through the hardness of your shield. Okay, yes, the hardness is five. So, well, here's what happens. Of the eight damage, five is reduced by the hardness, and the three that remaining mm -hmm. is applied to both you and the shield's hit points. Okay, so my shield is now at 17 hit so points. So the shield's taken a bit of a ding, and you take three points of damage. Okay. Because it hit you it can and dealt damage, it can then still grab you, which is what it does with its second action. Mm -hmm. Let's take that other uh, zombie, move it through the crates towards Starbird. Starburns? Yeah. Oh, this <laughs> way. Yeah. Starburns. Starburns. Yes. Uh, it's going to move there, and you know what? It moves towards the nearest foe, which unfortunately oh is no. Wendell. Um, Tries to be so. So it moves up to you and uh, is going to attempt to swing. But Goblin Luck is with you, because I roll a four. <laughs> um, it swings wildly, getting only an 11, which is not enough to hit you. I My don't poor think. cloak. Yeah, no, your Aww. cloak's getting all ripped Aww. up. Um, but that's all it can do this round. Micah, it's your turn to act. Um, let's see. I'm going to use... Micah's kind of freaking out, because she was not expecting this on a happy boat trip, but... This Let's was a happy boat trip. Here. Well, it was <laughs> fair. It was a sad. It was an exciting <laughs> boat it's a trip. Refugee you don't boat know trip. what we came from. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Micah herself does not have a ton of experience, so what, yeah. whatever you decide is Somebody's smart like, is probably ah. what she decides is smart. <laughs> All right, now the zombie in front of you has been very badly hurt, but it is right. still standing. Um, what do you want to do? And it's grabbing me. Yeah. I don't want to use any splash thing because that would possibly hit you, right? So can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. That's true, but I don't want to break my friend egg. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you're gonna break me. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, I'll use acid splash then. All right. Let's uh, see. I believe that requires you to make an attack roll. Okay. So okay. go ahead and roll that. Let's see here. So that's seventeen. Uh, 17 on the die, or is that... No, a, a 10 no, with my... Total? Yeah. All right. Uh, your uh, glob of acid strikes the zombie. Go ahead and deal damage. Huzzah! Let's see. Karina, Let's you take one point of acid damage from the splash. Oh, okay. okay. The Sorry. fire, by the way, in the back continues <laughs> to grow. I don't even notice. <laughs> I just realized I yelled into a microphone also. <laughs> the acid or the fire? <laughs> the fire continues to grow right, in the back sure. of the <laughs> So it's five damage, and then the one acid splash. Uh, that destroys it. Yay! It collapses to the ground. It did not have too many hit points nice. left, Whew. but uh, that takes care of it. The acid hits it, like, hits it right in the face, and its face just melts in, and it just collapses Ooh. to the ground. Uh, you still have one action left, oh, right. but um, uh, there's not a bad guy next to you. You can draw a weapon. Yeah, I'm going to move, yeah, because right. I want to help <laughs> Zell. All right, go ahead um, and move yourself out of the way. So, yeah, I'm going to run as far as I can up here. What did I move at speed? 25? Can I go here? I You'd have to scramble over those barrels. Oh, no, that's fine. You can, okay. you can move through it. No. Okay. Right. I'm little, you like you. <laughs> All right, great. That's your third action. Karina. Cool. All right, so I will move up toward the zombie here. 5, 10, 15, 20. Perfect, one move. And you are flanking. Sweet. Which means it has a penalty of two to its armor class because okay. it has the flat-footed condition. All right. So now, um, as I run, can I start like naming off some of the NPCs that I know and just like say, "Go put out the fire" with using their names. You you are screaming to them from here. You can see Heliana up on the aft castle, mm -hmm. swinging a lit torch uh, at some darkened figure. Oh, okay. Uh, she doesn't look happy about that no, decision, yeah. but she's doing what she can. Sure. You can also make out. Uh, Opposite her uh, is the knight, uh -huh. who is up there, and they're both fighting some other figure oh, up back there. Okay. Um, there's something bad going on back there, but um, as All far right. as the other, I mean, you know the name well, of the kids. Once Go I fight, see, children. Once I see that instead, <laughs> I would like to yell at Zell to uh, go help uh, Heliana. All right. 
Uh, whether or not he listens to me, I have no idea. But sure. <laughs> okay, so I did one action. I'm yep. gonna take uh, hit with my axe here. Ah, oh, this dice is going back in the bag. That's a four. Uh, so four. with my uh, bonus here, that's gonna be an eleven. That still hits because you're flanking me. Zombies have terrible okay. AC. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's see. That's gonna be. Oh, that's a little better. There. So seven plus four is gonna be eleven points of damage. Eleven. What actually turns into sixteen? That zombie is now very badly hurt. So you moved. You made one attack. What are you doing mm -hmm. with the third action? Uh, crush it. Pretty sure if you hit it crush again, you him. can take it out. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that sounds like an excellent plan. All I'll right. Try to hit it again. So hey, new dice worked. That's a nineteen. Yay. So that's going to be a total of twenty-six. Twenty-six. Ooh. Go ahead and roll damage. Twenty-one because we minus uh, five for your second attack, but it'll still yeah. hit. Oh, and that's it's right. still Thank actually you. a crit. Oh, nice. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, but <laughs> I rolled one. <laughs> yeah, but but watch so, this one. <laughs> so with my bonus, that's a uh, it's going to be a five. five. Double it for a crit. Doubled for ten. Okay. Plus the slashing of five. Okay. You just did fifteen, 15 points a day. Right. Uh, that <laughs> removes it from play. Awesome. One <laughs> slice bites into the left side. The other slice bites into the right side, and the two pieces become undone. Sweet. All right. Great. We're at the end of the round. Illuminated, back illuminated by the fire. You see another form come slithering out of one of the broken coffins. Mm. This one doesn't look like the others. The others were big, shaggy, f rotting flesh. This one, the the skin and flesh on it is tight, pulled across joints, split in places. It's hairless. Its long ears are pulling out, and out of its mouth is a long, lolling tongue. Oh, if you no. put this down here, yep, the fire illuminating it from back. Mm -hmm. And it crawls out of the crate and screams, Fresh meat! And that is where we are going to call it this <laughs> week. I want to thank all of you for watching. Thank you for attending our first ever Oblivion Oath stream. We hope you tune in next Thursday at noon here on Official Paizo, the, the Twitch for Official Paizo, and uh, where we'll be picking up this combat and continuing with the tale. I also want to note the Sleepy Sea Cat map you see here is something we're going to be giving away. Uh, it's all drawn in permanent markers, so we're going to send that out to one lucky viewer in next week's Twitch stream. So make sure to tune in. We will see you then next time, uh, next week, at noon, at Official uh, Paizo here on Twitch. Thank you for watching, everybody. See ya. Bye, Bye folks.